just women are in danger, but all marginalized people. We're being uniquely different right now might truly be considered a crime. It seems as though we had all slipped into a false sense of comfort, that justice would prevail and that good would win in the end. Well, good did not win this election, but good will win in the end. So what today means is that we are far from the end. Today marks the beginning, the beginning of our story. The revolution starts here. The fight for the right to be free, to be who we are, to be equal. Let's march together through this darkness and with each step know that we are not afraid. That we are not alone. That we will not back down. That there is power in our unity and that no opposing force stands a chance in the face of true solidarity. And to our detractors that insist that this march will never add up to anything, Boston Red here with Friday Java, a weekly magazine of political theory, polling, and commentary. It is part of the Pete history called people that make up this fascinating journey. We are part of the Obama network. For that, we make no apologies. What we pledge to do is give you the facts on a bridge to history. What body politics is, the most up-to-date theories of political science and cephalic. Stay tuned for this incredible ride. Boston Red, peace out. Friday Java. On the 26th of October 2018, beaming from WBRN Radio and on the Boston Red Network. A a little bit of a programming note here. All of our programs on uh, WBRN and the Boston Red Network are becoming uh, to mash together as one. Those programs, of course, this particular program, the Boston Red Section, uh, numbers man, that is uh, economics or macroeconomics program. The open source, our technical program that addresses open source hardware and uh, also uh, software. And uh, all about sports, which uh, has not been populated as much as of yet, but it is also uh, coming along. And we have a special project, uh, the uh, debate project. And we have many deba- uh, debates up there and coming. The uh, Stacey Abrams, Brian uh, Kemp debate out of uh, Georgia. It is in the can. And we also have Andrew Gillum and uh, DeSantos uh, from uh, Florida. Our reason for covering these debates is to attempt to understand the various parts of the race in those particular states or machinations, whatever you want to call them, and how they line up with a, a national uh, pattern. And when we sort of understand how this uh, mosaic or quilt is put together, we have the national uh, nationalized uh, campaign that uh, DJ Trump is running on uh, immigration, primarily on immigration, and not as much about tax cuts. He's talked about some tax cuts but uh, the Congress knew nothing of those. Now he's on the border, sending troops to the border. Unfortunately for D.J. Trump, uh, under uh, Posse Comitatus, U.S. troops cannot act uh, in a warfare situation within the uh, borders of the U.S. They can assist, but that could have been done by the National Guard. Just strictly a campaign situation. 
now what is under uh, consideration is to just not let the uh, asylum seekers from Central America enter the U.S. Normally you can come to the U.S. border and enter in, uh, your asylum claim, uh, into your asylum claim, I should say. And it is up to the U.S. authorities uh, whether they will let you in or turn you back. In this case, it would be back to uh, Medico. So we'll see how that plays out. But all of this operating in an atmosphere of terrorism. We've had uh, partial sent to various people, uh, or at least attempted to be sent, are sent. Uh, George Soros, the uh, BNR uh, investor, uh, he uh, his, uh, received one in his mailbox. He wasn't home at the time. And then to uh, former President uh, Clinton, former President Barack Obama, and a long list of Maxine Waters, uh, Eric Holder, who used to be the Attorney General, the ex-CIA uh, director, and the list goes on and on. So now they're investigating that uh, particular situation, which highlights the degree to which we are starting to have terrorism. Now, for those that have been tuned in since the 90s, we had an, uh, an active uh, domestic uh, terrorism program against uh, abortion uh, providers. In fact, a prominent doctor out in uh, Wichita, Kansas, was actually killed by a bomb and that time you had Operation Rescue. So this is not the first time that a right-wing political organization has uh, attempted to engage in a terrorism. Now some would say, well, we had to weather uh, men uh, back in the uh, 60s and the 70s. Yes, but their, uh, their strikings uh, were uh, somewhat limited. Uh, to college campuses, a few laboratories, and that was uh, just about it. <coughs> but this Operation Rescue was a very broad campaign, but they actually had people outside of abortion clinics uh, in Wichita. It was so bad that uh, a federal judge ordered the marshals into Wichita, Kansas, one of the uh, of several times that has been done. They were ordered also into Little Rock, Arkansas, to enforce an order of the court, uh, the uh, of the district court. Now the marshal service has historically been used for those kinds of operations. Today is a different service in that the marshal service uh, is uh, heavily armed. At one time uh, they were not necessarily heavily armed. Yes they carried guns but they did not have these special units that they have today. So it is a different era for um, American uh, politics. But as one commentator uh, said, this is not exactly new. It's been around for a very long time. If you look back to, uh, uh, there was a vicious campaign in uh, 1998. Willie Horton appeared. Uh, for those uh, in Boston, he was known as William Horton. He was never known as Willie Horton. That was to cut down a Professor uh, Dukakis. He was running uh, for president uh, against... Uh, George uh, H. W. Uh, well, excuse me. Uh, against uh, at at the time there. Uh, let me see who was running. Yeah, uh, this was yeah 1988. This was George H. W. Bush. He had been the vice president uh, for Ronald Reagan for eight years, and of course he won election. He did not win re-election. The re-election was William Jefferson Clinton out of Little Rock, Arkansas, spearheaded by one Ross Perot, a Texas. Uh, Molly B. and Abbott ran a third party uh, or, uh, operation. But in the Republican Party, the types of campaigns that you now see that uh, DJ Trump is running, a little different variation, but that's been ran. The Southern Strategy, Carl Rove and Company, uh, and various other uh, practitioners uh, in that line have ran those campaigns since 1968. In fact, there's an excellent book if you want to read it. The uh, Seven Strategy uh, was written uh, by Mr. Phillips, uh, one that was associated with the Republican Party. But those kinds of things have went on and on, and we saw the same reappearance. The Swift Boat ads were the same uh, kind of operation that were run against uh, Brother Kerry. And prior to that, we had the uh, 2000 election stolen from Albert Gore of Tennessee was decided by the Supreme Court had hanging chads in uh, Florida. This is why the uh, 
campaign uh, there in Florida now between Mr. Gillum and DeSantos is very, very important. Gillum is a progressive. We've had other progressives, incidentally, in uh, Florida. The event itself was uh, sponsored by the Claude Pepper uh, Foundation. Uh, Claude Pepper at one time was a senator from uh, Florida. So there's a history of progressivism in Florida. He was known as Red Pepper at the time, and then he became in the House of Representatives, and he was known uh, for himself as a senior citizen for the affairs of seniors. That was Claude Pepper. So now we're seeing progressives come once again in uh, Florida in the form of Andrew Gillum. And, of course, there's long-served uh, Senator there, uh, Bill Nelson. We haven't covered any, I don't believe, any of the debates between Bill Nelson and Scott, the current governor of Florida. Hopefully, on the project, we'll get some of these in uh, next week. We're literally broadcasting these 24-7. Some of them we already have in the can. We just need to do the scripts to introduce them. So we have Gillum coming up, uh, DeSantos, and Tracy Abrams, a tax lawyer from Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, there's Brian Kemp. Now, it's an interesting situation with him. He is the Secretary of State, thus the head person in charge of voter suppression. One of the things we'll be looking at here when we do have a special program on polling is the voting suppression of factor. You've heard much about the so-called influence of the Russian government in the 2016 election. But if you look at it quantitatively, the uh, influence of the factor of voter suppression was much worse than anything we could come up with uh, with Cambridge Analytica, etc. And some of those ads that were on uh, Facebook. First of all, most of those ads were par- were targeted at people that had basically already made up their minds. Yes, there were some ads uh, targeted Afri- at African Americans, but there were also the ads were on so-called uh, African American-owned uh, radio. The uh, ads and various people were championing this uh, situation there, the super predator that was on Hillary Clinton. So that was the idea to keep down the votes. But if you go into Wisconsin under Boss Walker, if you go into Michigan under Gateway, uh, what was that? Uh, uh, Gateway uh, Snyder, uh, some of the Republican governors there, and of course in Florida, in Alabama, Mississippi, they suppress more African American votes than Russia, China, and any other country could have ever dreamed of. So that you need to spotlight is a voter suppression. A lot of work, incidentally, has been done in uh, Florida. There's no doubt about that. Uh, lawsuits have been filed against uh, Kemp, and they continue to be filed against Kemp. And when we do the uh, debate, you will get that. Uh, in the, I said Georgia. Sorry about that. In uh, He's in Kemp's in Georgia. But the situation is that old Kemp has been the subject of many, many lawsuits. And you were hearing the debate where Kemp talks about his uh, voter registration, online voter re- registration. Yes, but it's how you do online voter registration. What has happened there, signatures, uh, they claim, don't match. Uh, I've had that before. But many of us don't sign our names the same way we're not DJ Trump. We're not putting up uh, billboards for our signatures. So that is a little bit different. Or that... Uh, <clears throat> Some number doesn't coincide, or something of that nature, to scrub or to eliminate uh, these uh, voters. Very little nitpicky things have been happening in uh, Florida. 53,000 people. Uh, the uh, journalist there, uh, uh, the German journalist, what's his name? Pratt? Pratt? Anyway, he's uh, been behind many of those lawsuits filed in Florida. We'll talk about that and talk about uh, voting suppression. But on Friday Java Magazine show, we'll have the people from uh, the Crystal Ball in Charlotteville, uh, Virginia. That is Larry Sabato's shop. And we always remember Heather Heyer, who was a victim of white supremacists. And just this week, D.J. Trump has said, well, I'm a nationalist. Well, obviously, if you're running America first, you are a nationalist. But you're a nationalist, uh, interesting enough, in a world that is becoming uh, increasingly more uh, global. And whatever a country uh, does or doesn't do, if they are doing global business, uh, even China came under uh, criticism for how they were doing 
business in a Kenya, calling of names, uh, calling people uh, monkeys and things of that nature in their locomotive industry. So those things now come out and they appear not only on social media in a Kenya and across the great African continent, but they end up here and across the EU. And many people attribute that particular situation to the Chinese uh, socio-economic, uh, uh, socio uh, makeup uh, in China, not having a diverse uh, uh, country. And the same thing goes for Japan and, and their attempts to do that in Europe. There is no eating, but you have to have a diverse country. You can have an all-German kind of, it's close you can get to it, or an all-this or all-that country. But your problem is, if you have a capitalist system, you have to find markets. And you will saturate the markets within uh, your particular country. And this is what is happening uh, now in the U.S. We look at uh, uh, Facebook, uh, or Alphabet, uh, Google Enterprise, and several of those other enterprises have their uh, earnings report have been uh, cut. And the reason for that is uh, primarily... They uh, have not been able to obtain the numbers from, quote-unquote, the international markets. Now, it's just not enough for Facebook or Google to dominate in the U.S. There's just simply not enough uh, market uh, share there for them to expand in a way in which they are set up to expand. Now, this is what America First does to you. We're now starting to see the limits of, quote-unquote, the America First policy. And tariffs themselves uh, cause problems, and they're beginning to also cause problems. And we're, we're looking to see where the quote-unquote holiday of Santa Claus program is going with these major retailers. Now, they've said they'll be up, what, 4.6% or whatever, or 5%. Well, maybe, maybe not. And now the market's becoming very speculative. And those are the things that progressive candidates should start to talk about. The economy is not what it is made up to be. D.J. Trump has made another move on his so-called drugs program. Well, those drugs are, are injections or drugs given in physicians' offices. And to make that work, he has to have the cooperation of the uh, so-called uh, pharmaceutical companies. And they are not as anxious to do that because in other markets, like Canada, for instance, those are smaller populations. The drugs are cheaper, no doubt. But this is, we're not talking about when you go down to uh, CVS or pharmacy or whatever pharmacy you go to, or chemist or whatever you want to call it, for having the national viewers or listeners. Uh, that, that situation is totally different. And the old idea of another tax cut. Well, you can cut taxes uh, down to zero if you wish. Your problem there is how do you raise uh, your revenue? And that becomes a very, very foxy program. You're boxed in. You can cut the social programs, but it's down to a point. Now we have the reemergence of some type of exotic uh, polio type um, virus and various other things. You also have uh, the various uh, climatic uh, problems uh, from hurricane this and hurricane that that are appearing and costing billions of dollars. What happened in the Florida panhandle? Parts of it are still down. Well, that costs money. It costs money to the people that insured it. That costs loss of business there, loss of livelihood, etc. So those things have to be paid for. So you, it's no matter where you go with your taxation model. <coughs> excuse me, you've got problems. And if you're running that type, it's a Keynesian model, basically speaking. But the Keynesian idea was to do that when the economy is low, not when it's high. So you're creating more inflation. At the same time, the Fed is trying to keep somewhat of a handle on inflation. Uh, look very quickly here, and we'll go to the people. Well, we'll go to some polling first, but uh, uh, we let's see. Well, crude oil has dropped. This is Brent crude. has dropped to $76.51. We won't spend a lot of time on giving you numbers here, but uh, what, we, what we can say is you got the Fed in here. Uh, Australian uh, shares were down. Uh, Various uh, chip makers were down. Uh, Hynex is uh, down 1.24% uh, in Hong Kong. Hung Sing was 
0.55 lower there. Tech shares dropped uh, 1.9, almost 2 percent. That's in Hong Kong. In China, also uh, Nasdaq futures uh, were down 1 percent. The S and E S and P E minus futures fell almost 1 percent there. So in other words, you had a wobbly week. And what happened this week on Wall Street was the wealth that has been created the first uh, basically 10 months of the year evaporated. And see, this is the actual so-called DJ Trump economy starting to take place. You've been, the first few months of the year, you still had the Barack Obama economy. So now you're stumbling into the effects of his economy. And uh, that is causing uh, problems because what you have basically coming out of government is um, soap opera type stuff. And this is what the Republicans have been running in campaigns. But they have not been running it in a continual campaign when they won presidencies, and this is where you get into problems. The idea of uh, fake news, the dishonest media, Lupinpresse, uh, the dirty media, that's a German word there. But you start getting into this, and you have to understand, when the fascists ran their uh, program in Germany on the chicken group, uh, Germany was a much uh, smaller country, and the industrialization in the 40s in the U.S., the U.S. was primarily still an agricultural comp- uh, country. So this is uh, with Amazon here projecting revenue growth would uh, be slower in in the year, sending its shares down uh, 8% in after-hour trading. That's with Amazon. That's their holiday forecast for years. Amazon uh, has uh, made uh, expensive bets on new technology programs uh, like its uh, acquisition of uh, Whole Foods. They did get that, but only Whole Foods can do so much. Weak revenue growth uh, stuck out like a sore thumb. That's according to Greg uh, George uh, Sol- Solomon, an analyst at uh, High Graves uh, Landau. Uh, when uh, you're trading uh, over 70 uh, times expected earnings, it doesn't take much uh, to jolt the share price. Well, that's true. So, again, to the Thanksgiving holiday uh Runs from the uh, holiday into uh, late December uh, through New Year's was a particular surprise. It's forecast at, at the Q4, we call the fourth quarter Q4. Sales will rise between uh, 10 and 20 percent, up uh, what 72.5 billion, while analysts expected 73.9 billion. That, well, that is not that much, you just to see. Uh, 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 that would be Amazon's uh, lowest uh, quarter sales growth since it started out in 2016. Last quarter, uh, sales increased 29% and 43%. But you, uh, those uh, types of numbers are an aberration. Those are not the types of numbers that we see. Uh, let's do the uh, present polling, and then we'll go to the people at the uh, University of Virginia. We've already done our editorial here. So we'll, these are actually from Friday uh, coming out here. Uh, these are from uh, the 10th District in uh, California, Denham and Hardin. Uh, Hardin is, a, is ahead by two points. Let's just say something about these margin of errors. The margin of error is usually a 3.5 in most polls. Uh, so in other words, these uh, you're going to see a lot of them in the coming days within the margin of error. Those are strictly turnout elections for the most part, and we'll try to get into those and see exactly where they're going. Uh, another one out of California is Harkley and uh, Levine. Levine's up by 14 points. Uh, you can see Levine. That's in the 49th district. In Illinois, the 13th district, uh, Logan and uh, Davis. Uh, Davis is up by five. Davis, I guess, is a Republican. They see red. In a Jersey Free, uh, McAfee is up by one over a uh, Kim. That's in Jersey Three. In Ohio, one. Trebot is up by a nine. I think Trebot's been up uh, basically along uh, there. Another very close race out of uh, Texas uh, Seventh District. Coverson is up by one over Fletcher. So, in other words, that is just up. We go to Thursday polling here. We have, uh, this is WCTV, um, Nelson, and a Scott, a one-point advantage for Nelson. 
And what's surprising here, now this is a little different here, Epic uh, MBR, I don't know much about them. Yeah, this is uh, James and Debbie Stabenow. Debbie Stabenow is up by seven. She was most time has been in the double digits. Diane Feinstein up by 16. Won't spend much uh, time on that one. And the same WCTV uh, poll has uh, DeSantos up by three over Andrew Gillum. He's at 45. He's at 48. And uh, Kemp uh, Abrams poll, that's NBC News uh, poll, has a DeSantis up by wait a minute yeah, by three oh excuse me the uh, Kemp up by uh, two within the margin a very close race in Georgia and this epic uh, out of uh, Michigan they had Whitmire up by five Whitmire has been up constantly in this race Newsom out of California up by eleven he's been in the double digits for a very very long time Cicero's uh, over Kim. That is California 39s up by one. I won't go into some of these other. Uh, Waxton, that's Virginia, the 10th district. Waxton's up by 13. That's a Washington over Constock. Constock has been in the rear uh, where you don't want to be for a very long time. And uh, Stockton University, uh, that is uh, Jersey 2. Van Drew is up by 17. I guess you can just call that race for Van Drew. I haven't seen any other polling there. The Momic poll, McCaffrey and Kim. Kim is up by 2. That's in Jersey 3. Job approval uh, from the USA Today for DJ Trump is at 43. The Reuters has him at 46. Uh, we don't give Rasmussen anymore because they are an outliner. We'll see how outlandish they are. Generic ballot here. This is U.S. Day at uh, Democrats at uh, 8. I've seen some. The Democrats at 4. It just varies here. Gravis. Now, this is kind of an interesting situation. Gravis is a Republican polling house out of Florida on Wednesday. Had Nelson up by a 4 over Scott. And Stabano is up by 16 in the MGR uh, poll there. A Rutgers Eagleton poll. Uh, um, that's Menendez. Up by five. And another Grabbers poll. I'm not certain about this. Has Gillum up by a five. Oh, we'll take a station break here. WBRN Radio. Hold on. We have two updates here from um, the Crystal Ball. New polling in Nevada, Texas, and in Wisconsin. This is on the uh, 24th of... Uh, October. This is by the Reuters people, I'm assuming. Nonetheless, in the state of Nevada, Dean Heller and uh, Jackie Rosen. And, uh, and Heller is a, is ahead, according to this, uh, by uh, six points, uh, 47 to 41. In September, it was a 46 to 43 uh, Heller. So it shows he's, he went up a bit. In the uh, governor's race in uh, Nevada, Laxol, uh, 46 to Sherlock, uh, whatever his name is, uh, Steve Sherlock, 41, so that's by about five points. It was a three point back in uh, September. Line Ted Cruz, this is in Texas, uh, 49 to 44, according to this, over Abino O'Rourke. Uh, and it was, what, 47 to 45. This is by Reuters. So basically, he uh, well, it's a five-pointer now, and it was a three-pointer. Wheelchair Abbott, uh, governor there in Texas, over uh, Lupe uh, Valdez, uh, 53 to uh, 48. That's always been double-digit. T- double uh, Tammy Baldwin, she's in Wisconsin, uh, 54 uh, to uh, Liefer uh, Voskemeyer, Voskemeyer, anyway, 39. Vosmeyer was at 39, uh, Tammy Baum was at 42, so Tammy Baum was actually improving. And the governor there, uh, Tommy Evans, he's the superintendent of instructions, 48 to uh, 45 over uh, Boss Walker um, here, uh, three-pointer. And it was, what, a seven-pointer in uh, September, three points, were, three of the uh, polls were uh, conducted uh the 12th through uh, 18th in uh, Texas and Wisconsin, and October 12th through 19th in Nevada. 
a hundred, uh, excuse me, 1,298 likely voters. You'll see the likely voters here. And basically the same in uh, Texas. Of these uh, free polls, probably the best results for Republicans in Nevada. Well, the Nevada race, uh, very important there. We'll see how Harry Reid's uh, turnout uh, model of procedure uh, works. In uh, Texas, previous uh, wrote his uh, ISOPS uh, polls uh, was a, a rare survey that showed that uh, Beto O'Rourke uh, with more support than uh, Lion Ted uh, Cruz. So, yeah, a little bit different there. Now, let's go to the more recent um, poll uh, out of... Uh, From the people from uh, the uh, Crystal Ball, a dozen days to go. Ratings are changed in gubernatorial races. They have a lot of races here, and we'll try to get over those. Uh, in uh, Kansas, uh, they have moved that race from lean Republican to a toss-up in the state of Kansas. Uh, Kate Brown, uh, whom we support, uh, out in Oregon, from leans Democrat to a toss-up. Jenner, uh, Rand, uh, Rendo, Rendos, uh, that is, uh, huh, I'm not sure where it is, uh, Rhode Island, I guess, uh, likely leans Democrat, like a Democrat there, yeah, in an open seat in, uh, from lean Republican to a toss-up. Oh, that's in South Dakota. All right. Okay, we got it right here. Maybe I have to check and see what they were doing there. Anyway, Crystal Ball's ratings. Uh, these are uh, house ratings. Debbie uh, Lasko, uh, that is in Arizona. We covered some of those debates from safe Republican to likely Republican. Jim Acosta, um, as Arizona 8, incidentally. Jim Acosta, uh, California 16. From safe Democrat to likely Democrat, uh, Tipton, uh, that's in Colorado, uh, three. From likely Republican to lean Republican, Buchanan in uh, Florida, 16. Likely Republican there, it was lean Republican, not much difference there. Florida, 18, leans Republican from likely Republican. DeSantos is old house seat, that's a Republican uh, seat there, it's lean Republican now. This boost out of Illinois, 12 from a toss-up to lean Republican. Uh, Jason Amish, that's in Michigan, free, leans Republican. Halsinger, that's another Michigan, two from safe Republican to likely Republican. Fred Upton, another Michigan uh, seat, what's that, six, lean uh, Republican. Uh, New York, 24, that's upstate, that's a lean Republican there. Uh, Calco, old Peter uh, King out of Long Island, like a Republican, I'm surprised he's not safe, he's been around forever. Scott uh, Taylor, that is a Virginia, uh, from Toss Up the Lean Republican, Virginia 2. And another Virginia 5, Garrett there, moved from lean Republican to a Toss Up. We won't repeat most of these, but the, some of these toss-up races, Denham, that's California 10, King, California uh, 25. That's where we'll see a lot of the action. Uh, Rottenbacher, um, California 48, Royce, California 39, Young in Iowa, Jenkins, that's Kansas 2, a bunch of toss-ups going there, Andy Barr, Kentucky 6, Paul Quist, um, Maine 2. Mike Bishop, that's Michigan 8. All these are toss-ups at Ted Budd, North Carolina 13. Lance in Jersey 7. Mc, uh, McAfee in Jersey 3. Uh, New Mexico uh, 2. Not sure who is that. Fesco, that's upstate New York. That's New York 19. That's a toss-up there. Claudia uh, Tierney, uh, New York 22, a lot of them, Fitzgerald, uh, PA1, Corbison, Texas 7, Sessions, uh, Texas 32, 
old David Brett. He's the man that uh, literally put the uh, majority leader of the House out of business. A uh, an economist, uh, so-called economist, that's now been uh, accused of actually stealing the work from uh, Dr. Bernanke. And an open seat here in uh, Virginia of five. Lean the Republicans, uh, the uh, open seat here, Nolan, that is uh, Minnesota 8. You probably heard something about that one. And there's a bunch of these, Duncan Hunnick, Tipton, uh, uh, Kubelo in uh, Florida 26, won't go into a lot of these, DeSantos, Lean's Republican, Ross, uh, Karen Handel, Georgia 6, I think she's pretty safe there. Boost, I've seen some polling uh, that shows he is more safer today than he was yesterday. Fred Upton, that is Michigan 6. Uh, let's see who else we, somebody probably have heard of. Uh, heard, uh, that's in Texas. Uh, 23 uh, CM uh, Rogers, that's out in Washington State in 5. And, and Washington State also uh, 3. I'm not familiar with that district. Likely Republican, uh, Don Young is in uh, Alaska. Debbie Lasko, uh, that is uh, Arizona 8. I've covered that before. McClendock, California 4. Uh, New Year's, uh, he played an important part in trying to dismantle uh, the Affordable Care Act. He's in California 22. That's unfortunate there. Buchanan, uh, Florida 16. <coughs> Excuse me, Diaz Ballard. Has been, that family's been around forever. That's Florida 25. And who else here? Um, some of these guy characters never heard of them before. With the Democrats, a uh, toss up. They have a Minnesota 1. And Lean's Democrat, uh, that is uh, what Minnie Walters, old district. Um, Daryl, uh, car alarm, Isaac, he retired. That is a lean Democrat there. Kaufman, Ralph Latham, that is around the Miami area there. That's an open seat. That leans Democrat. Uh, Kevin Yoder, Kansas Free, that is, uh, leans Democrat. Paulson and Lewis out of Minnesota 2 and 3 leans Democrat there. Trump was around, uh, well, no, it was Tommy Ryan was in that district with Paulson. I don't think he's do Paulson any good. Comstock district, uh, all the polling I've seen shows that she is uh, toast and nearly toast. If Virginia is a very interesting state. The Trump effect there is not as great as in, say, for instance, a Minnesota. A likely Democrat is Peterson. He's in Minnesota 7th. Goffenheimer in uh, Jersey 5, uh, Maloney in New York 18, Cartwright in Pennsylvania 8, and Ari Barra in California 7, and even McSally's old district uh, in uh, Arizona. So that is uh, Arizona, doesn't give which one, Arizona 2, yeah. So basically... Um, They moved a red state of Kansas, a uh, Kansas different situation down there. Brown back in Kansas and a lot of fiscal mismanagement. South Dakota, the uh, home of the late uh, great uh, Dr. George McGovern, is a toss-up. And uh, they've also moved uh, Kate Brown. Uh, we'll have to look more at Kate Brown and where she is. The Senate, well... We've been watching uh, Claret McCastle, and uh, the, I think the hope of Claret McCastle is that the people in uh, Missouri that voted against Mike, uh, Mike that wrote, voted against the uh, Right to Work initiative, that she can utilize some of those people, particularly out of the urban centers of uh, Kansas City and uh, St. Louis. Donnelly. Well, Senator Donnelly is in Indiana there. He's been hanging in there, at least in the margin of the air, and he's been slightly ahead. So uh, you kind of look at the polling there, and we'll talk more about it, what the Kavanaugh effect there was. Claire McCastle uh, voted against uh, Kavanaugh when she really didn't have to, and uh, so did uh, Senator uh, Donnelly. So we are, uh, uh, we the crystal ball are holding those as uh, toss-ups. And uh, 
They're not riding off Donnelly. Very uh, are McCastle. Well, Clare McCastle's had very close races. And this is one of the things to point out that a lot of these races are going to be in uh, one of the, I think it was uh, Amy Walters at the Cook Report. Well, uh, perhaps somebody else will be pluralities, not a majority. In other words, some of these uh, races will be won by less than 1%. And it will be getting down into just a few thousand votes and perhaps even under a thousand votes in uh, some cases. So look forward uh, to that actually happening. And it could uh, very much uh, come. Let me get to that conclusion here. There's been a widespread uh, use this year. Uh, been uh, used as a wide term. <laughs> Excuse me. You can start over. There has uh, been a term in widespread use this year. We aren't sure. You have heard it uh, where a uh, second wave, where the word wave is in, the first is a uh, color typically associated with the Democrats. Just uh, to double check, we uh, searched our archi- archive excuse me, and found that the term has uh, never been used in the crystal ball. Well, that's good. A blue wave, purple wave, or a red wave. Well, see, historically in American politics, the term red used to uh, denote uh, a situation uh, identified uh, with the left. But now red states are identified with the right. Red states, Jerry Pippen talked about this, the red state of Oklahoma there, in those kinds of situations. But what is to be noted here, if you notice in the last few days, uh, particularly from Andrew Gillum, He's changed the tone. At one time, he was running a very, very positive campaign. Still is. But he addressed DeSantos and his racist comments, the monkey uh, swinging through uh, central of Florida. He brought it head on. And here's the reason for this, that Andrew Gillum knows that his base has to be energized, his people. And for the independents that to see it is an abhorrent situation, DeSantos and a few Republicans... They will come to him. He's not going to lose anything on that particular situation. Now, there was a little issue there about what a ticket to um, Hamilton. Hamilton was a slave owner anyway. That that situation there, and according to H, uh, H, uh, she was uh, there with Cooper. You can go to Holly uh, uh, H. Uh, her uh, site there, uh, Holly Caster Jane. Anyway. She and Cooper were talking about this incident. They had Greg Sargent. He's out of, does the plum out of the Washington Post. Was also there. He has a new book out. But one of the things I did gather, and I promised her I would talk about this, I did gather from at least uh, Sargent's uh, situation there. And there was in Cooper. Cooper didn't want to make any predictions. But at the same time, they were looking at the Democratic Party. And the Democratic Party has a history of, miscalculations and not being able to deal with the Republican Party's uh, dirty campaign until it's too late. But D.J. Trump's been running a dirty campaign uh, since he announced uh, for presidency, so it's not unusual for him, his stream of consciousness campaign, all about him. So the basic uh, lore of propaganda is when you have a D.J. Trump out there, but D.J. Trump doesn't care as long as the word Trump appears. It can be uh, positive, negative, or in between. doesn't matter to D.J. Trump. Get his name in the paper and hopefully get it on the front page of the paper. And what this does is reinforces D.J. Trump's overall image. So if a person is looking at D.J. Trump as an absolute outlaw, want to impress them, but the people that are in a marginal situation with D.J. Trump, it uh, doesn't move the uh, media, doesn't move the needle to a negative side. It keeps it basically in the middle. And then you hear all this information about how great the economy was. That's why we started it out deliberately where the economy is today. And it's a very fragile economy. Uh, and what even makes it much more fragile is these uh, tariffs here not winning any tariff war with China. China has decided, look, basically we're going to lose... Uh, A point five of our GDP, so what? We'll win this game in the end because we have a larger market share in the way our particular model is set up. And we can also go to our 1.2 or 1.3 billion people 
and use it as the U.S. does a basic economy. Well, they can do that. And where the U.S. is vulnerable is is uh, in some of the agricultural markets and some other things that they have to go and find uh, new buyers. But they're also competing with Brazil and various other people that sell soybeans and those crops and sell hogs. The Chinese love their uh, pork. And also the Chinese incidentally own the largest pork manufacturer here, uh, I mean in Virginia there, what do they call themselves, Southern somebody, anyway, they own them. And they can process that pork and send it on to China. Uh, yeah, but they buy it from farmers in uh, Kansas and in Iowa, the pork bellies. And we'll try to give you some pork bellies. But those are some of the things that you look at when you're framing your campaign. And that was Beto O'Rourke. He finally came out swinging. You have to come out swinging. You can't be a, uh, as we'd say in the old days, this is, I think, somewhat of a sexist term. But uh, it's not what uh, Sarah Palin talking about, man up. We're not talking about anybody manning up. But you can't be a soft touch. And that is not a sexist term. You have to be who you are. You have to deal with aggression with a steady flow. And that's what Andrew Gillum, uh, we saw, uh, he didn't raise his voice, but he made his point to the Santos. And that debate uh, is a classic debate, and it's how you combat someone uh, like him. And if you go to uh, Stacey Abrams, of course, Stacey Abrams being an attorney, but a tax attorney, a little different, they're not a criminal defense attorney. But still, she's able to deal with Kemp, and Kemp was out there in La La Land. Kemp tried to accuse her of... Uh, not managing her finances properly, she uh, counted that uh, she supported her parents. And her father had cancer, etc. And she's on, obviously, a payment plan with the IRS. I visited that shop before, and many people in business have these uh, defined payment plans. As long as you don't violate them, you're fine. Uh, and so she's fine on that. Well, then here comes Kemp has been in various bankruptcy procedures and where he ripped off supposedly one of his good friends. He said, well, I only had 7% in the business. But old Kemp is left out there. It didn't give him any points, is anyways, what I'm trying to make and these different stance ways that people are doing things are, are different. Now, as far as the policy, yes, health care is out there. The Democrats have been talking about health care. They've been talking about... Uh, equity in terms of uh, tax fairness that doesn't make as much residence as uh, our uh, fifteen dollars an hour forced amazon to do that and that is with uh, workers but now it's coming home we've noticed uh, last few days reading the wall street journal that uh, the uh, various corporations are laying off 500 700 workers and that is where they where it is happening and even Amazon saying, well, we are hiring less workers because we're automating. Well, that's the tip of the iceberg when you bring in uh, robotics and machine learning into it. So you look at 2019. You always have to look ahead. 2019, uh, GDP will be less no matter what DJ Trump does. He can make payments to farmers. He can cut taxes. He's getting to the point he doesn't have much wiggle room in, in terms of that side of the equation. Yes, he can cut social programs. Yes, he can try to attack Medicaid and uh, Medicare and bow to it in uh, 2020. But see, here's the situation. If in uh, 19 they do have a recession, he's banking on, well, I'll be out of recession by election year, which is quite possible. This is a very managed capitalist economy. But however, though, because of various things that are happening here, in Italy they're having problems there, this international thing, um, the various models, including the IMF, um, uh, etc., have forecasted uh, 219 is not being a stellar year. In modern industrial capitalism, you, it's utterly impossible, and it always has been, to maintain that type of performance uh, with 3.54% in the modern ones. Now, some emerging nations, China 6.5%. They can maintain that. Uh, they had been running 7 and 8, uh, and you're sort of overheating. Not to worry about that now. It's more down. So this is that. We don't really want to get off that much on that. But on the week that was, we'll hear once again from uh, Charlie Cook. And we'll go to uh, the uh, people, uh, at, uh, excuse me, at uh, 
Nate Silver's shop. We'll go there and look at some of Nate Silver's uh, models for the week that was. We've already covered pretty much uh, the ID controversy that's in North Dakota with Heidi Han- uh, Heidi Heineken and uh, the various Aboriginal nations there that use uh, P.O. boxes. And they're trying to fix that. So we have a lot on uh, voter uh, suppression. We'll be talking about that. The World Series is uh, two for the Red Sox of Boston and Fenway Park and zero for the uh, Dodgers of Los Angeles. They will be returning to Los Angeles. And we'll have a special program, incidentally, on the World Series. We sometimes have it before the World Series. I guess we'll have it in this. But nonetheless, the Dodgers have to now start their uh, quote-unquote comeback program, or they're going to find themselves down 3-0, and uh, that's very hard to come back uh, from that type of uh, a situation. So we'll we'll have to see on that where uh, things end up. Let's visit the Major League Baseball very, very quickly here. And this is from the 24th. We have a score here. Uh, the Sox, 4-2. Uh, to two. Uh, The Lions score. The Dodgers had uh, three hits and no errors. And the Sox had four runs, eight hits, and no error there. The loser was Mr. Price. The winner was Mr. Kimbrough. And... Oh, excuse me. The winner was uh, Mr. Price. Sorry about that, Dave Price. And the loser was um, Mr. Ryu. And so we'll have on a Friday night in Los Angeles. Uh, let's see. Well, hmm. Trying to see where we are here. The over under is a 7.5. And Rick Porcello will be uh, for Boston and the rookie Walt, uh, Walker Bueller. Very good pitcher for starting uh, uh, for Los Angeles. Let's get the NBA scores in here very, very quickly. NBA season incidentally has started. The Cavaliers were at the Pistons in the Motor City. Pistons 110 to 103. The uh, Trailblazers of Portland were at the Magic Trailblazers 128 to 114. The Celtics were at the Thunder in OKC. Celtics 101 to 95. The Nuggets of Denver were in Los Angeles. The Lakers are starting to perform. Uh-huh. Uh, the Lakers are 121 to 114. Mr. Uh, James, uh, what did Mr. James had? Uh, was it 26, 28 points there uh, for Mr. James? We'll see you on uh, the week that was tomorrow morning, and we'll have uh, several more uh, debates. Uh, we'll get the uh, Abrams uh, Kemp debate out of Atlanta, Georgia. And we'll also get up to Gillum DeSantos debate uh, there. And over the weekend, we'll have a numbers man also uh, will appear. That's our financial program or economics program. And perhaps we'll get an open source uh, report out. We, we're we working uh, as quickly as we can work. Hopefully, I answered some of the questions uh, that were posed uh, by our friend H, otherwise uh, known as... Holly Castor Jane or H uh, what is it uh, well, anyway she is uh, sort of like uh, Mohammed uh, Saliman uh, <laughs> is using initials there so she's yeah she she is uh, HCJ anyway Have a good weekend, everyone. We'll see you on a Saturday morning.